Hello world! Today we'll be combining two previous projects together to create a chatbot using the Natural Language Toolkit or NLTK library and a Flask website that we built in a previous video. Um, please watch the Flask video by clicking here so you can see how we set this up and then watch the NLTK chatbot playlist so you can see um, the progress we've made on the chatbot by clicking here. And then while you're at it, please like this video and also subscribe to my channel. Thanks. But before we check it out, welcome to the 131st video on my channel where I'm building my own digital assistant named Shane, like Jarvis from the Iron Man movies and comics. Um, I would love to have Shane on the internet in a chatbot so all my fans as I continue to grow can interact with Shane and kind of build its library to be able to uh, chat and have a conversation. Now this wouldn't be too useful for me personally because I don't have any intentions of having someone to talk to but I would like to have that large amount of data for Shane to know. So that's the end goal but for now this is just a start. So let's check out the progress so far and um, then we'll run through the code. So if you uh, have never seen Flask and you didn't watch my previous video, Flask is going to open up a uh, website on your local host or your local machine and there's other services you can use to actually host it temporarily like Apache but for now we'll just run it from our local host. So it looks like this so um, some text up here, this picture here, black background, there's a uh, text box here, and a text box here. These are forms if you know HTML, which we'll go through. So right here as a placeholder it says start a conversation. So let's run through some. Uh, we'll only do a couple. So let's go, uh, hello. All right, Shane responds, hello. Okay, let's do a, uh, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How are you? Okay, let's respond. I'm okay. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Um, I don't, I don't know. I thought you'd know. I kind of cheated on that because uh, that's not a very good answer. But uh, let's ask something else like, what's your name? My name is Shane. And then let's just say goodbye. You get the point. All right. Um, before you go, please remember to like this video and subscribe. So that's very thoughtful. Thank you, Shane. So let's uh, close out of this and stop the program. And so what this is, is just a simple Flask website. And um, it's taking the user, right? We're, we're getting the post of the user entering some information into a form, running that through a chat bot, and then returning it into this uh, bot response. So um, let's run through that code real quick. Again, please watch my previous Flask video to where I go more in depth. So first we're going from Flash, we're going to import capital Flask, the render template, which is where you save your HTML and the request, which is where you use get and post. Uh, we didn't use URL four or Flash in this case, but um, I plan to in the future. And then from conversation, so this is my own, um, this is my own Python file that I made. So don't try to import this yourself. I'll show you what it looks like in a second. We're going to import this function called start chat. So again, if you're just copying what I'm doing, do, don't do from conversation import start chat. It will uh, come up with an error. So then app equals capital flask. In parentheses, do the underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, because we're going to call that below here. Then we're going to do this class method called app.route. The underscore is just the home page. Oh, I'm sorry, the backslash is just the um, home page. And then the methods equals square bracket get and post. Now, I didn't use a get in here, but get uh, is the default, and it's when you access the page, go to another page, those are all gets and those are on um, backend um, server requests and post is where the user um, provides data and you use that data. So if you get rid of this, it'll just be an automatic get function. 
So then I created this called start page. Uh, user input is just blank. So if the request dot method equals post, which you can kind of see this right here, right? So we get the page, which is the um, 200, which is a successful web page loading. Then we're going to get posts. This is me writing, hello, how are you? I'm okay. Uh, I don't know. What's your name? Goodbye. So those are the posts. So if the request.method equals post, or equals equals post, we're going to capture that user input from the request dot form user input and then we're going to make it a lowercase string. So what does that mean? And I'll show you in a second. Um, the bot then we're going to store that um, the response that the bot does in this start chat. We're going to pass it the username. So in here is the NLTK's response. Then we're going to return it into this HTML and we're going to pass it the bot's response. OK, and then else. So if nothing is typed at all and it's just a get. So anytime there's a get, it's just going to be the blank home page, which is what you saw when we first ran it. Then if the under underscore name equals under underscore main, then app dot run. So that goes up here. It's going to find the main function in the source code, and then it's just going to run your app. And that's really it for everything that we just did. It's not that complicated. So then we're going to go into the HTML. And now I'm not going to go in through all of this because we've already went through it in the previous video. But I did want to show you one thing. And that is this form right here. So form method equals post. Right? So the font color is white. This is where it says you, the input type, and the name is user input. The placeholder you saw was start a conversation. So this name user input is what the form is getting. So request.form user input. So that's what it's extracting from in there. So whatever you type in here, since the this is a post, it's going to pull that. Same thing here. The, this is called the dialog box where Shane talks and we're going to pass it a value. So that means it's expecting a value of bot response. Now this is the crazy flask way of sending information. Um, but that's what it's going to look for that bot response. And that's where we send here. So bot response equals bot response. So this here, this value equals this here and this nomenclature seems redundant but um, you could pass multiple things and so that's that's what this home is so this is just a quick html website not a lot of uh, codes right here i do have a style sheet in there i just just to show it off again this is some flash specific html where it tells you that the url for is in static so what it's saying in your whatever directory this is in, look for static and then look for style.css, which is right here. Same thing right here. You have to store your HTMLs in a template folder. So this is saying render this template, which goes to your templates folder, and it finds this home.html. We can have an index.html, an about HTML, and then you can pass it there. And then all I have in the styles.css, that's what it says here, is uh, background color black. Okay, so I just wanted to show one thing. If you're having troubles with Flask, um, if you know how to fix this, let me know. But um, let's run the website again so I can show you what I'm talking about. Okay, see how the background is black, right? Okay. So let's stop this, and if I change this to white, the background color to white, save everything, run the program again, click on my local host, it did not change it. However, when I restart my computer, the CSS will update. 
And that sucks for troubleshooting, right? We're not going to program something where we have to reset our computer every time. So if you know how to fix that, please leave a comment uh, below. So basically, my local host is stuck until I restart my computer. So I think I just have to reset my local host somehow. All right. So going back to the NLTK part. So in this folder, we have the conversation. So you will first need to install NLTK. And from nltk.chat.util, now keep that in mind, this util file, import chat and reflections. Then we declare this pairs equals, and we have this huge list right here, which has internal lists inside of it. And this is where you program the chat bot. So I only have about 70 lines here. And if you know anything about creating a chat bot, you know that that's nothing, right? That is, you should have a thousand or five thousand or ten thousand, and to pass any kind of like humanoid response, you would need like a million, and you would have to capture intents, verbs, adjectives, all of that. So, um, so what we did was we created the function called start chat. We get a user input, then you do chat equals capital chat, and you pass it the pairs which are all right here, right? That's something you do, and then reflections. And reflections, if you want to use reflections, which we don't use here, you can create a chatbot where you say, I'm okay. And then the chatbot will reflect it and say, you're okay, right? It changes I'm to your. We did not do that in this one. So then we're going to capture whatever the response is from chat.converse, which is a method of the chatbot, and then we pass it the user input that we pass it here. And then we're going to return that response. So this response, this whole function gives this its response right here. Now what I've done was I went into this nltk.chat.util file. So what does that mean here? So let's uh, collapse all of these. So in your external libraries of... Uh, I did this in 3.7, but I'm actually running 3.8. You would find the NLTK folder. That's Flask. NLTK. NLTK here. Then you'd find the chat here. And then you will find the util folder. Utilities. Be very careful. Don't do this. This is bad practice. What I actually did was copy and pasted the real library and called it NLTK1, and then I made changes to the original source of it. I don't recommend doing that. That's just for my practice. For this program, I should call this NLTK my own, and then leave NLTK alone, but I didn't do that. So if you open this util file, it'll come here. All right, this is the reflections I was talking about. We didn't use it, but you can. Then you have this chatbot function where it wants the pairs and the reflections. And then you have this converse function right here. That is what's going on here. Chat.converse. We pass it the user input, which we defined here. Then I have a conversation log for if I wanted to write this to the conversation log. Uh, I didn't do that for this, just to show you. Um, I did program a, a previous input to say you've already asked that, but I kind of deleted it just for this video. Then I just used the original code, but I got rid of this while loop and just made it a one and done. So I, re I send the response to the self.respond, passing it the user input, and then I return response. All right. So again, I highly recommend you copy and paste your own NLTK file to call it something else like um, my NLTK and then edit this utilities code. Then when you come up here, you say um, from whatever you call your own file, I called it conversation. This would be from my own NLTK or whatever. 
all right so that's pretty much it um i hope you enjoyed this video uh if you are working on something with flask and have built something uh chatbot like this please leave a comment i would love to check it out and thanks for watching goodbye world